What a beautiful song. You know, I want all y'all to know tonight that we need to be very thankful with our lives. Now, I don't know what y'all are going through. You don't know what I'm going through. Some days I have good days. Some days I have sad days. I know you have sad days. But at the end of every day, we have a choice to make. Do we want to stand up and fight our battle? Let God train us and let, let all the glory go to God? Or do we still want to take upon our lives and do what we want to do? God has given us so much. Can we turn somebody, can you please turn your phone off? But at all times, we need to give glory to God in all that we do. And, and, and just, just be here and want to be used. And let God show us a way today. How many people here, um, when you ride through our city, how many times do you really look on the side of the streets? Or when you go to Walmart, you see the stop signs. You'll see people begging for money. You'll see people begging for this. And we see all this on a daily basis. But shouldn't it, shouldn't it make you want to stop and say, look, I can't give you any money. But I can give you the gospel of Jesus Christ. And I can lead you to somebody that can help you with your problems. And I think about how our world is and how addiction has, has come in families and, and ripped families apart, put kids in foster care, and you take good men, good women, has been destroyed by drugs and alcohol. And it breaks your heart. And you want to know and you want to ask. I ask this. I say, God, what do you want of me? We at Grace Ministries, we provide a building for people to come in, to get a meeting, to get recovery, to find God. And you would think that door, the hinges, we would have to put new hinges on. As bad as the drug problem is in our surrounding areas, you would think that we would have to have a meeting here and a meeting next door. It would be so many people coming in. But I truly believe today that God has who he wants here. And sometimes I have to stop and think, Jamie, you were one of the ones that, that didn't want no help yourself at one time. You didn't want to admit that you were powerless and that your life had come out of control or that you was going down a road of destruction. But today, if you are sampling with drugs, if you have gone back in secrecy and dibbled and dabbled, it's time to stop where you at right now before it gets worse in your life. Now, so many times we try to we try to fix things on our own, and that's why I love Proverbs tonight. We're going to do the devotion on Proverbs after I finish this with willingness. And Proverbs is going to teach us how we must lean on the Lord, how we must trust on the Lord, and how we must go through life in admitting that we need help from people. We need help from God first. But we should never be ashamed of our life to the point of where we ask for no help. And that we try to carry this burden on our own and told it on our own. And I'm going to tell you something. It will wear you out if you try to fight the battle of addiction on your own. It will worry you mentally. It will worry you physically. Not only you, but it touches your family as well. Your family becomes just as sick as you are. Because the families are looking at your life, and they are feeling hopelessness, and they're feeling like you're never changing, and that they keep seeing the same cycle over and over and over. But one thing that we can do today is put our trust and our hope in Jesus Christ. He is the only one that will give you the peace and hope that you need in your life. Amen. You can't go through life. It's hard enough to go through life on, on just a regular day in this life. But when you don't have Jesus Christ, I do not know how, how I made it all those years without Jesus. You know, a part of me, I think the devil fooled. Because I was one of those that didn't think I needed any help. I was one of those that, well, I can find God on my own terms. So I got the rest of my life to do that. But right now, I'm going to live it up as long as I can. But I found that real quick. And I thank God for his love towards me. I thank God for allowing things to happen in my life where it would press me down on the ground. To where I would have to... Um, Holler out and say, God, help me. I need your help. I can't do this anymore. If I hadn't had addiction to come in my life, if I hadn't had alcohol to come in my life, 
chances are I may have never found God. And that's why it kills me and it hurts me to know that people put labels and they put tags on addicts and alcoholics. And I'm telling you, I'm telling you this from the bottom of my heart. I thank God for what I went through. I thank God for where he has put me in my life, where he has put you in your life. It's no coincidence that none of us is here tonight, but God has each and every one of here, us here for a purpose. And that's purpose. The, the purpose of why we're here is to help us in our recovery so that we can go out here and rescue other people that's dying and sinking in addiction or, or is drinking and set to death. And do y'all realize there's people right now somewhere that's sitting in the house that wants to die? Or is somebody somewhere right now that's dying from drugs and alcohol? It should be enough to wake you up and it should be enough to where you would never go back to that old life that you were living. I just say it's one, one thing tonight that I want to pray on. I just want to pray tonight that God will take somebody's heart here tonight. And you, you, you ask God to come in your heart and search you and ask you, what can I do to help another brother or sister in addiction? Amen. What can I do in my life? How can you use me to go in here and help people in this community? Right. And I promise you, if you wholeheartedly go to God and you ask him to search your heart, he will search it. And there will be some things that you may not want to do, but it's going to be for the good of him. Nobody wants to admit that they've got a drug problem. Nobody wakes up and says, I'm going to be an addict and lose my family, lose my job, lose my friends, lose everything that I've dreamed of. I've lost my college education. Nobody wakes up and says that they want to be that way. But things happen in our life. Whether it's out of control or in our control, it has happened. So our past is the past, but our presence is right now. And whatever we do in our life from this day, from this night of this meeting forward, all that other stuff can be left behind. Right. Amen. But the thing you don't want to leave behind is your testimony. Amen. You want people to see you. When you walk out of these doors and you present yourself in the community, it ain't got to be Grace Ministries. I wish you would do that. That is nice, but that's not what it's all about. But it's going out here and using your life to represent Jesus Christ Amen. and to show the, 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 the dying world who you are in Christ and the love and the, and the bright light and the shine that God has given you in your heart and he has cleansed you from the outside and cleansed you from the inside out. And you're walking around here happier than you've ever been. Nothing can break you down. Bad news where you used to go use or drink, you go praise to God. See, we have to get a point in our life where instead of falling by the wayside or listening to the devil's schemes, we need to understand tonight that the devil is alive. Amen. And he will tell you things that's very convincing. He will make you feel like you're the only one in the world or people talk about you or, or people see you as your old self. But I know Jesus Christ's death on the cross has cleansed me. Amen. It has cleansed you. You don't have to be that person that, that you once was. Amen. You can make a change right here tonight to follow God. And that choice is yours tonight. The choice is mine. When I wake up before I go to bed, when I get in my car, I have a choice tonight to say, Jamie Elliott is not going to use drugs tonight. Amen. When I wake up in the morning, I'm going to praise my Lord and Savior. I'm going to do the best I can, and I'm going to depend 100% on Him. Amen. That's the choice I have. So I pray that when we leave this meeting, that these meetings will structure us not only in recovery, but structure our lives and surround it with Christ. Because that's what it's all about. I can sit up here and go step 1 to 12 every Tuesday night. I can go Facebook Live, step 1 through 12. And I can preach, I can talk myself to death, but it's not going to be any good until you first admit that you're powerless. And that you need a Savior, amen, right. to guide you and direct you. So I've got a question right here. How bad do you want to change here tonight? Right. How bad do you want to change? Another one is, what is your willingness to change? What is your desire 
to come out of addiction? What is your desire and willingness to stay clean, to work your recovery, stay in church, be grounded, surround yourself by good, positive uh, Christian brothers and sisters that love the Lord and all they care about is seeing a change. You see, it's so easy for us to go out the door. It's so easy for us to go back to the drug. It's so easy for us to go back to the alcohol and choose all these bad things that we know once in our life that has destroyed everything we want. So when you get a little leeway in your life, you need to think real careful before you make that decision again to go back out. Number one, things has gotten no better out there in this world. I don't care if you've been clean 20 years, 10 years, or, or 10 months, or one day. Amen. Things are, hasn't got any better out there, and it's still the same game that it was 20 years ago. Amen. It may be a different way of doing it. it may be different names of drugs, but still a drug is a drug, alcohol is an alcohol, and it's all a defunctional lifestyle. Amen. But what have you choose in your life? If you're here tonight and maybe you're going back out, people don't know about it. That's one thing. But if you think you're fooling anybody, you're fooling nobody but yourself. And you're digging yourself deeper and deeper in the ground. The more you go out and use, the more you go out and drink, the more you live an addictive lifestyle, you are digging a deeper hole every day and every day. And when that hole gets too deep, guess what? You can't find your way out of it. Right. And then you see a miserable, miserable thing happen in your life. Destruction. I don't care what you do. Nothing's going to be able to fix it. I don't care what, how many meetings you go to. Nothing's going to be able to fix it. Until you are ready to admit that you have a problem with drugs and alcohol. First, you have to admit that you have a problem. Then you've got to take action to fix the problem. But before you do all that, you need to make sure that you are right with the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. You need to make sure that you have had a personal relationship, that you've been born again, that you have been saved, that you have accepted the blood of Jesus Christ. And once you have accepted the blood of Jesus Christ, then you can work on your recovery program. Then you can get your tools from the steps. Then you can to, uh, apply it to your life and use them. And, and God will be with you every step of recovery, every step of it. He will not leave you behind, but he will go in front of you, and he will make a way, and he will make a path to where you can walk down where you couldn't walk down it before. Never think it's too late for you here tonight. And if you have messed up this week, if you did mess up next month, that is over and done with. Now it's time to, to ask yourself this question. How bad do you want to change? All of us want to make a change, don't we? All of us want a better life. It ain't the life we want, but it's better than the life we had, right? right. Any day clean is better than any day on, on, in a, um, addiction. Any day clean is a whole lot better than, than a day strung out. Because when our minds is, 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 is in the bondage of drugs and alcohol, we can't think for ourselves. We don't love ourselves. We don't want to be around nobody. We want to be secluded in a place where it's just us and the drugs, and that's our lifestyle, day in and day out. I mean, we don't care about nothing no more. Shannon has told me in the past that when we were, um, when I was going through that battle of addiction, she said that she knew she was married, but the person she married she wasn't living with because I had changed so much. Y'all didn't see that change, but, but Shannon saw a change because she's used to knowing Jamie for who he is day and night. But she didn't have me in that household. She had somebody else. Amen. But it's something I could do about it. It's always a way out of a situation. But you have to be willing to ask yourself, what are you going to do to make that change here tonight? You don't have to live high. You don't have to live addicted. You don't have to be sick on drugs anymore. You can get rid of all that mess. You can bring it up here this altar. You can leave it. You can walk away and know that Jesus Christ will heal you. He will mend you. And he will structure you into the way that he wants you to be. So when you come up to this altar, or if you're sitting out there tonight, or you're watching on Facebook, know this. 
that Jesus Christ loves you. He cares for you. He wants you to have a better life than what you're having, but you got to make a choice tonight to turn to him. you got to step out of self, and you have to give your whole life, and you have to commit your whole life to Jesus Christ. And you have to leave it with him. Don't give him things that you want to hold. And don't, don't be questioned, well, I'm going to hold on to this. Jesus knows I have to have it. It's only a true way, one way to have a cleanse. And that's to get rid of everything and let Jesus Christ uh, mold you and, and make you whole again. Amen. You don't need that stuff that you're holding on with. Trust me. I've given up some stuff the last uh, year and a half that I thought I couldn't do without. But Jesus Christ gave me another love, and that's for him. Amen. I look back at them days of how I thought I had to have it, and I couldn't make it without it. But when I really give it to Jesus Christ, I gave it to him. I said, here, it, this is yours. I can't do it on my own, but Jesus, I need you to deliver me. And I gave it to him, and I never looked back. The same way I deal with my drugs. I gave it to him, and I never looked back. But I kept my vision. I kept my heart and soul straight ahead. I didn't veer to the right. I didn't veer to the left. I got rid of people in my life that wasn't doing me any good. I got rid of uh, uh, things in my life that was dragging me away. I got rid of the... Uh, Places that I used to go to, people, places, and things, you have to get rid of all that. You have to be well, like born again. When you accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you have him come in your heart and you ask him to save you. And if you truly meant that, then you are saved. But it goes the same way with drugs and alcohol. You have to truly, truly get rid of it. And you truly have nothing to do with it. That means the people that comes along with it. you got to get new friends. You got to start going uh, different places, and you got to start looking at things in your life that's dragging you down. Amen. I know nobody here wants to tell somebody, "I can't hang around with you no more." But what has that gotten you in the past? You do an inventory. What has that place done you? What is that place, or what is that? What does that thing do to you? Does it draw you back to the drugs and alcohol? Does a person draw you to the alcohol and drugs and cause you to slip and fall? We have to ask ourselves, are the people, places, and things that we're hanging around with, is it good for our life? And when you honestly go to God and, and you search God and you say, God, I want to be in your will. I want your will to be done. He will never leave you in the wrong way. Amen. Never. You may want to back out sometimes and you might not want to admit it. You might not want to release of it. But God's going to be with you every step of the way. Praise God that he loves us so much that he gave up his son. Amen. Amen. Let's go on and get in this right here, second part. Now, one right here, how serious are you taking recovery? Now, this is one I'm not going to stay on long because it's, it's, it's self-explanatory. How, how serious are you taking your recovery? I know a lot of people go to recovery, and I've seen this in the past. It's all about them. It's all about the war stories. It's all about I did this, I did this, I hung around, I did this. But they never once admitted that I've got a problem. They in full-blown denial and won't admit that they got a problem. And I've seen times where people say I'm clean, but they're just as dirty as anything. That's not my job to judge. I'm going to tell you that right now. It's not my job to judge, but God knows your heart. God knows my heart. If I'm doing something I'm not supposed to and I'm up here telling you something else, well, God knows. And, and I'm going to have to answer to him. And people around me is watching my life and I'm living out recovery and I'm making a lie out of it. Well, people see that and they get, uh, how do you say it? They get to where, well, if that's how you got to be in recovery, I don't want no part of it. I'm going to stay doing what I'm doing. We've got to be very careful that we are who we say we are. That's not being judgmental. That's telling you the truth of how we, how we should work recovery 100%. Amen. Uh, do you want to make a change? We talked about that. Are you taking uh, addiction meetings serious? When you come, are you trying to get involved? I remember at NA and AA meetings, when you went in, you go in and ask somebody, can I make copies? Can I make coffee? Can I do the... Uh, Reading at night, can I, can I do this? You need to make yourself involved. When it's share time, don't sit there like frogs on the log. Right. 
talk about your recovery. That's why we have share group. And when you talk, you talk about stuff about recovery. Because this is a recovery meeting, right? It's about drugs and alcohol. And that's what it's about. Shouldn't be anything else added in. They should be strictly talking about drugs and alcohol. Because let me tell you something. When somebody comes in that door and they need a meeting, and they see that a meeting ain't going on, and they need to know how to stay clean, but they can't and they walk out of this building, they're going to go back to use. And that one person we lose because we didn't educate them about drugs and alcohol may OD tonight. That's right. So we need to take things very serious, and we need to have this meeting structured. You need to learn about drugs and alcohol. You need to study about it. You need to live it. And you need to apply it to your life because this is not a joke. Amen. If you are here tonight and you're struggling with drugs and alcohol, you're going to have to, one, find out a way to overcome it. And I tell you every week, the first and best way is to accept Jesus Christ. Amen. And turn away, repent. Lean on him. Give him your life. That's all you got to do. And everything else is going to come natural. Because when you get saved by the blood of Jesus Christ, you're going to want to do everything you can to learn how to stay clean. Yeah. You're going to want to tell everybody in the world how to stay clean. But we do. We need to take these meetings serious. Because these meetings will save somebody's life. But if they come in, there's a lot of distractions going on, a lot of laughing going on, a lot of stuff that ain't got nothing to do with recovery, then they won't never come back again. That's right. And I'm just being honest. I'm not being mean tonight. Amen. But I've had things to distract me. And I know other people, when they come through that door, they're going to be distracted. <clears throat> and we have to be honest with ourselves now. If I can't sit up here and tell you the truth, then I'm lying. Amen. Recovery should be about recovery. What we do before the meeting is fine. What we do after the meeting is fine. But while we're in this building for that hour, we need to take the word of God serious. Amen. And we need to take this uh, meeting serious. Amen. Because somebody is dependent on it. And it may not be in this room right here, but it may be somebody watching on Facebook that really, really needs the Lord tonight. Maybe somebody talking about suicide or somebody that's going through addiction. Somebody's going through something and they need help right now. Not, not tomorrow, but they need it right now. And guess what? Jesus Christ is right here waiting right now. You don't have to wait till tomorrow. He is here with you right now. Amen. What's holding you back? Your lifestyle, your addictive behavior, self centeredness or greed. What is holding you back tonight? Have you not got clean or you not worked recover because you're in denial? Or is it that your pride is so big that you're scared to tell anybody that's scared of what people are going to think about you or say about you? See, our pride can jump in and it can cause us to live a long cycle without asking for help. And that's what gets us the worst. We have to be willing to admit right now that we are powerless. And y'all know that. You know that, that if you are doing drugs on the side, you've got to be honest with yourself. One or two things going to happen. You're going to die. Most likely you will die. Or you will lose everything you've got. Or you're going to find yourself in prison for the rest of your life. So right now, it's time to start playing with recovery. On Facebook, whoever's watching, it's time to stop playing and it's time to work recovery. Amen? Amen? I've got some worksheets I'm working on and I'm working on a book. That probably won't, won't be done for years, but I have, I have made a pledge to start a step book with my own words, with everything, and not taking anything from anybody. And I pray to God that he would give me the words to be able to do that. But until then... I'm going to do the best I can to understand what God's word is. Y'all ever seen anybody talk and put batteries in? <laughs> Look, y'all, I, I, I ain't trying to be up here and come down on nobody. I ain't trying to, but I've been doing this for eight years, over eight years. And I've seen a lot of people come, and I've seen a lot of people go. And I can only imagine. You don't know what I go through at night. Every one of those people I remember coming through that door, I still have in my mind. That's right. And I asked myself, did I give the right words when they was here? Did I do the right things? Did I say the right things? 
Did I give the true recovery or did I skimp on it? And then I start beating myself up thinking, well, was it something that I did? But I have to understand this. You can't make a horse drink water till he's ready, right? right. But it, that does not make any excuse why I stop doing what I'm doing. I can't give up because the world didn't give up on me. God didn't give up on me. My family didn't give up on me. So I'm not giving up on nobody else anymore. Do I, do, I, do I separate myself sometimes? Yes. You want to know why I separate myself? Because I can't be around that lifestyle. I can't put myself around that lifestyle because, number one, my recovery comes first. And if I can help somebody, I'm going to do the best I can, but I'm not going to put myself out there and be like a lone wolf and get, you know, be like a wolf going against an elk, a baby elk. I won't have a chance. So a lot of times we try to help people and we find ourselves going back out before they get help because we weren't strong enough to help. So we had to be very careful tonight. Yes, sir. But if your recovery is dependent on anything, it may be the degree of your willingness to get and stay clean. Amen. To be willing is to be ready to act voluntarily. Right. You need to make a decision and you need to go on and get it over with. You need to do what you got to do right now. There's too many rehabs in America. There's too many uh, detox centers. And we got a God bigger than anything. Amen. There's no excuse where we have to not get help. Amen. Amen. It is an attitude and action which says, I'll do anything and does just that. When you get sick and tired of being sick, then you ought to have a willingness to want to change no matter what it costs. Because you didn't care about destroying your life and getting high, drinking and losing everything you got. So why should you be so worried about getting help and going through recovery? Don't you think that's a lot better than living a life in destruction and, and being on drugs and, 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 and looking at your phone when you go to bed trying to figure out who you're going to call in the morning or what's going to happen when I call and don't nobody answer the phone? What's going to happen when I get sick? Nobody will come get me or nothing. That's a bad life to have to worry like that on a day a day of the cycle like a dog chasing his tail and you don't never catch it. You keep going and going and going and going and you don't get no relief. You might get that drug, you might get that fix, you might get that drink, but it just that happiness goes away. Right. Time you get it in your body, poof, you're looking for more. You get some more, you can't even enjoy that high because you're trying to figure out how you're going to get more next. Right. It is a life where if you've never been on drugs and alcohol, and if you are here or if you are watching and you are a supporter, please take time to understand your family member that's addicted. If you're addicted tonight, please give your family member hope and do something in your life to where your family member won't worry and worry to set to death. See, here's the thing. I always talk about addicts. I'll talk about alcoholics. But the poor families are sitting out there and don't have no hope. If they're, they're just praying, they're, they're, they're crying out, what can I do to help my lovely child? They sit there and go through the photo books. And they look at their children's pictures growing up and they see the grandkids and they see the life they're living. I want to stand up for family members too. I pray tonight that we'll have somebody to stand up and want to, they, they want to, to, to do something for families. <coughs> Educate families. Because I'm going to tell you something. I've seen it. I've had a lot of phone calls. I've had, I've had women 60, 70, 80 years old call me about their grandkids, about their son. And they will bawl on the phone. They will be so upset because they don't know what to do with their kids or grandkids. And it breaks my heart because I want to help. If I could, I would. But a lot of times, I can't do nothing but listen. And I wish we had more going on. And I can't help the COVID. I can't help that breaking our numbers up. But you look at all of us in here. It ain't many. But each one of us, if we talk to three people this week coming up, well, if we talk to three people before next Tuesday night, look how many people that is. Right. If just one person in here talked to three people, and I talked to three, that's six, and then nine, then 12, and so on and so on. That's what we got to do. So we got to find ways around COVID. And it's God gives us ways around COVID. 
But we're not doing what God wants us to do. We, we're more comfortable just coming here and sit and go at the door and not tell a soul. Then come show up next Monday, I mean next Tuesday, and you look around, where's everybody at? Nobody has gone out here and told a soul about this meeting. I'm telling y'all, one or two people can't do this. It takes the whole body of Christ to go out these doors and spread the gospel. And I'm saying this because it's people's lives out there that's dependent on us. And I know God's a big God and he can, he can flip his finger and he can change somebody's life out there more quicker than I can. But there's a lot of people that's being forgotten. There's a lot of people out there sick and suffering and addiction that the world does not care about. And I'm here to tell you that breaks my heart here tonight. Because I can't do nothing about it. The only thing I can just I can do is use my life and share what God has done with me. But don't you feel like that, y'all? Don't you feel like you would love to do more, but you just can't? Amen. But we serve a God that bigger, that's bigger than we are. He can. That's, right. that's why it's so important for us to pray for one another. Everybody in here, you need to pray for one another. Amen. Everybody don't have it made. There's a lot of people in this room that's hurting, and you don't know nothing about it, but people are hurting on the inside. I hurt on the inside. I've got dreams. i got wants. you got dreams. you got wants. But that's what the body of Christ is, is to love on one another. Amen, right. It's to pick each other up and care about one another. Amen. And Lord, forgive me if I've let that go here lately. But I do try, and I do do what I can. But you just have to be willing not to give up when you see things not working. God's got a reason things are not working, and he knows that. But we should never question that because maybe he is making us stronger. Or maybe he is putting something in somebody's life for that perfect time for us to come together and you will see a change in somebody's life. More importantly, give yourself an opportunity to cultivate your life. You need to search yourself deep. Just like tilling up a ground with a tractor or, or a tiller. You need to get deep in yourself and you need to bring out some stuff that's really holding you back. You need to figure out tonight what is causing you to stay down. If you can't get all drugs, you need to take it, get a piece of paper out, and you need to write down what is causing you not to stop using. If that ain't good enough, write out the goods on the right side. What's the benefits of not using? And you write them down and you compare them, and you'll find out that the benefits is going to be a whole lot better than the other ones. And this is the thing. Invest your life. Invest yourself in a good church. You're welcome here every Sunday. Our doors are always open. But if you don't want to come here, I can't force you. But you need to be in a Bible teaching. You need to be in a church somewhere. Amen. You need to be learning the Word of God and you need to be applying it to your life. Yes. You need to learn all you can learn. That way you can sip, search those scriptures so God can search you. Amen. There's nothing better than reading that Bible. There's nothing better than to have a bad day and get home and open that Bible and have God speak to you. And it just relieves you of your stress. I can't make it a day without something of God's word in my mind. If I leave the house without prayer, if I, if I, if I don't study during the week, my whole week is lonely. Nothing goes right. I, I just don't feel right. So please, is just, just get your Bible, open it up. And if you don't do number read one scripture a day, that's your fellowship and that's your time with God. And you will really start enjoying it. And the next day you're going to say, man, i got to read two scriptures. i got to go read another scripture. And you're going to find yourself so deep in that Bible. And you're going to look back and say, where did that time go? My life has changed. I don't have a want for drugs and alcohol like I used to. And you're going to find that it's because of God's word is being embedded in you. Amen. And it's teaching you. And it's molding you. And it's no better feeling than that. It's no better feeling. I've got so many things at home do with addiction and Bibles. I told my wife the other day that I used to want a lot of things. I used to go spend a lot of money on fishing gear, hunting gear. 
anything for the yard. But now all I want is Bibles in my house. And, and I, I never, I was never like that. Amen. I'm telling you, once you get in it, I promise you this. You won't stop. And God's going to take you places that you've never been. Amen. When you lean on God, he will give you the strength to overcome your dependencies. Now, I've talked a lot about this, and I'm getting ready to go to Scripture right now. But when you lean on God, he's going to help you with your dependencies. And it don't have to be drugs and alcohol. You can struggle with something that's just as bad as drugs and alcohol. <laughs> A lot of people say, well, I don't have no problem with drugs and alcohol, but money destroys their life. Yeah. Greed destroys their life. They can't get enough of greed. They love it. And you can get dependent on these things. Pride, boastful, internet pornography, lusting of the world and woman and man. There's so many things out there that you can keep saying and saying and saying. And if you let those things get deep in you, and if you don't do nothing about it, you're going to find yourself trapped. Yeah. You're going to find yourself in a big mess. So what is the best thing to do? Don't get involved in it. If you get that urge, go to God first. And plead your case to him. And tell him, that you're not strong enough to fight this craving, but I know you are. Amen. Pick that Bible up and so, say, Lord, lead me in the right direction. Amen. Open that Bible and start reading. It don't make no difference where you at in the Bible. Just open it up and start reading. And you're going to see God's work is done. First, we have to trust him, right? Amen. First thing we got to do is trust him. The second thing is don't trust in your own understanding. Don't trust in your own thinking because your thinking has gotten you where you're at. Right. Search God for the right path to take. He will ever mislead you. God will never mislead you. But I guarantee you one thing, you'll mislead yourself. I want to read something else right here out of the recovery book. God is pointing out so many things tonight. I'm like, God, I said, it might be here two hours. He said, say what I got to say. So. I ain't about to go back on that. <laughs> but uh, I'm going to read this none of us set out to become addicted to something we were seeking something else escape from pain perhaps or something to make up for our losses and brokenness or maybe we had a subconscious desire for self destruction now I want you to understand that right there and let it, let it get in your mind none of us went searching for it right but we found it, didn't we? It found us. So the only way you can overcome this is you have to turn away from it. And you have to lean on God for his understanding and his wisdom. And when you go to God and ask for that understanding and that wisdom, he's going to give you what you want to hear. It may not be what you want to hear or what you want to do with your life, but he will tell you what you need to do. So when you get that audible feeling or you, you feel like the Lord speaking to you through scripture or something, you need to take heed of it. And you need to apply it to your life and use it in your life. And you need to be obedient to God. Because God is trying to fix you up and he's trying to mold you. He's trying to get the wisdom in your mind and the knowledge. But first, in order to get that wisdom and get that knowledge, you have to go to Jesus Christ and ask for forgiveness. Amen. You have to first go to Jesus Christ and ask him to save you. Amen. And admit that you are a sinner and that your life is out of control. First, you have to go to him. All right, let's read this. I've been poking along. There we go. But the topic of this is coming out of Proverbs, Proverbs chapter 3. But it says, trusting in the Lord. Thank God we have a Lord to trust in. Yeah. But, but verse 5 and 6 is what I wanted to focus on. But I want to read you 1 through 4. My child, never forget the things I have taught you. Store my commandments in your heart. If you do this, you will live 
many years and your life will be satisfying. Never let loyalty and kindness leave you. Tie them around your neck as a reminder. Write them deep within your heart. Then you will find favor with both God and people. And you will earn a good reputation. That's what it's all about, ain't it? Amen. Now listen to five and six right here. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Do not depend on your own understanding. Verse six. Seek his will in all you do, and be and he will show you which path to take. Amen. He will show you what path to take. You're not going to have to sit there trying to figure it out. He is going to show you the path to take. And let's jump back here at five. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Do not depend on your own understanding. Let's read right here for a second. To lean upon the Lord means to put your whole weight on something. When you put your weight on this step up here, you're depending on that step to hold you up and climb them steps, right, to get you on the stage. When you go to that door, you grab that door handle, and, and you're depending on that door handle to hold you to go through that door. When you get in your car, you depend on your car to get you from here to home, right? Amen. So if we can depend on all this structure stuff and all this material stuff, how come we can't depend on the Lord and lean on Him Amen. to give us what we need? So we have to get to a point in our life that where we depend on the Lord more than we depend on anything else, then no matter what happens in our life, no matter what hits us tonight when we get home, whether it's bad news, whether it's sickness, or anything, we have to learn to lean on the Lord and lean all we got on Him. Because if we don't learn to lean on the Lord, then one or two things, you're leaning on yourself and you're not depending on the Lord. You're depending on yourself to get you out of your problems. You're depending on this world to get you out of your problems, and it ain't going to get you out. You've got to lean on the Lord with all your heart, and you've got to lean it with all your life, and you've got to submit everything to Him. But we must uh, trust in Him completely in every choice we make. But when we make these choices, we need to make sure that we're in His will. We need to pray about these choices before we act on them. We need to go to him and, and, and search. Say, God, I'm praying about this, but before I act on it, I need to make sure that it's your will, but it's not my want. And see, a lot of times, it'll be what we want, and we might want a quick way out or a quick fix, but we make the wrong choice, and we carry ourselves back down the wrong path. But anytime you pray and you go to God with a question, he will lead you in the right way if you honestly listen. Right. And if you honestly let him make that choice for you, you're going to be in a lot better uh, situation. Yeah. Right. Read verse 6 again. Seek his will in all you do, and he will show you which path to take. And this right here, we must acknowledge God in all our ways. This means turning every area of our life over to him. Amen. You turn every part of your life over to him. The addictive personality, the addictive lifestyle, the bad places, bad things, bad people, bad thoughts, things that are not good for you, even things that you like and don't want to get rid of, you have to give it all to him. Amen. Everything. And you're going to have to start over in your life. And when you get rid of everything and you start over with the Lord first in your life, you're going to see the Lord work in your life like you've never seen him work before. So with that said, I hope y'all enjoyed that tonight. Amen. And we'll go to our share group. And thank you. And whatever I say up here, I'm not saying this to make anybody mad. So I don't want nobody to think that I'm picking on you or or whatever, because when I do this, I'm speaking to myself as well. Amen. But I do. I'm proud of Grace Ministries. Yes, and I'm proud of what God has made us. Right. And I want to be a beacon light in our city for addicts and alcoholics to be able to come through that door, to be able to get educated. And I do. I want people here to present themselves like you have God living in you. Amen. And you do everything you can help. And I'm telling you something. When we use our lives like that, you're going to see God bless this ministry. You will see and bless it. Yes, sir.
So whoever wants to share first, don't be shy. Go on and get it out tonight. 